Uh, thank you, Kirsty. That was the view from Scotland. At this point, let's stand back a bit. Now, do you ever get the impression that England is innately conservative? Confronted with the idea of overthrowing the powerful, the English hear the arguments, consider them, and then go home and say, not today, thank you. Is that a fair characterisation? Is that just southern England, but not the radical north? Where does this leave us? Where does this leave the UK? What does it tell us about the Union? I'm joined by three giant minds of history and culture. <laughs> The historians David Starkey and Simon Sharma and the playwright David Hare. David Hare first, conservatism. Do you think England is basically quite conservative? Well, is that so, what you think of today as you watch these results? Uh, yeah, I mean, self-evidently, um, English, English electorates tend to vote conservative, don't they? And there has to be either historically a massive overturning like the Second World War and what the reasons for why they threw Churchill out, historians whom I defer to, argue about, but it seemed to me the army came back and they didn't want what they had, the, the level of injustice they'd had in the 1930s, and you had a radical overturning. Otherwise, the only times in my lifetime that people have voted Labour have been I, under charismatic leaders, either Harold Wilson or Tony Blair. Charisma. They're the only people who've ever won elections. <laughs> <laughs> David Starkey, do you think England is inna innately conservative, different, it, say, to some of the European countries or Scotland? Uh, yes, in one sense, but equally, it's a very gentle, sloppy conservatism. Yeah. I mean, we're not talking, you know, everybody uses the terms like right. I mean, compared with the European right, our right is very soft. In the same way, generally, compared with the European left, our left is pretty soft. I mean, we, after all, benefit from a highly orderly, historically anchored system of politics in which there hasn't been revolution. I sense some of my friends on the left deeply disappointed about the fact that we haven't had a revolution. <laughs> they feel left out. But, you know, it's a jolly good thing. It produces a relatively calm, sensible, political, non-hysterical discourse, unless you read too much of The Guardian. No, you, you, I, was you, with, well, no, I was, I was <laughs> nodding a lot because I was with an Amer largely, well, partly an American television crew last night who were looking at the returning officer thing <laughs> as though they were watching Downton Abbey and they were marveling <laughs> at its gentle those eccentricity. Chains. Those chains, those mares in their chains well, there and one, furs. I was so <laughs> wanting the monster raving loony party to make more of a showing, but there, there was the hat and, this, and they also said, why aren't the families with them? I said, well, this is sort of unseemly. And I thought of Orwell, as I often do, uh, Mr. Bristling Whiskers Blair, I thought, Eric rather than Tony, and his sort of sense in which ultimately we're all possibly even too gentle for our own good, but we are tea and damp rain and so on. So I absolutely agree with Tony. With, uh, with Tony. <gasps> oops, <gasps> the, with insult. <laughs> the insult. The <laughs> insult. I suppose I do agree with Tony because I wanted to say, actually, I don't think we're particularly conservative country. It, it wasn't a matter, I think, of Tony Blair's charisma, and it's very weird now to think of Gannex Wilson as a kind of charismatic figure. But we are a Blairite country. What struck me about David Cameron's um, speech this morning was that it was such a it was it was capitalism ostensibly with the social conscience. Mm. E even though parts of the SNP agenda, everybody wants to be uh, the, the Blairite position, except the Labour Party. Yeah, remember, we only hear from David Cameron on the subject of One Nation, like we only heard from Margaret Thatcher on the subject of St Francis. It yes. only happens on election day that he seems to remember One Nation. But look, and actually just, today, just, just to finish, what he actually said today was, we need to heal a broken nation. Well, who broke the nation? But equally, which... No, 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 which... which no, 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 no. The, the real question is, which nation? I mean, right. this is the key question of One Nation Toryism is we've tended to assume that it means being nice to the lower classes. You know, David Cameron doing his Lady Bountiful Act. If you look at Disraeli, what Disraeli did was play to the idea of a very particular sort of nationalism. The reason the Tory party survives in the 19th century, the reason you get working class Tories is because you play the line of empire. And remember, British nationalism was strictly for export only. That is to say, when you were abroad in the empire, English and Scots were British. Back home, they've right. always been in tension, always separate, always different, always distinct. Okay, so we've done conservatism and you, you, you've raised nationalism, because that was my secondism, and I wanted mm. to talk about whether the nationalism the we're seeing yes. now, the, but whether the nationalism we're seeing now, with a, a tinge of English and Scottish, is that something unique and unusual in our history or is that something? No, I think that you've got two, you know, in, in the enveloping darkness of this election, you have two points of light and the only, nobody seems to refer to the fact that actually London voted against the trend. If you read tonight's... Only a little. If you, if you read tonight's a London paper, 
the Evening Standard, it had no mention of the fact that the City of London had actually moved against the trend. So you have this huge multicultural success called London, which is a city full of different races, people from all over the world. They're voting progressively, and Scotland's voting progressively. But they're the points of light, aren't they? Yeah, but the trouble is, actually, that's Notting Hill talk, David. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly the problem for the Labour Party was that it was, conceived, it was thought of outside London as a London organisation. Didn't matter where Ed Miliband's, you know, constituency was. It was thought of, I mean, you're right in a sense, London is a huge success. And if there's only going to be a, a real progressive narrative of a new kind of Britain, it would be lovely to think that it was all going to be about the day-to-day -day neighbourly living of different cultures and classes. But the Labour Party had a duty to listen to Wolverhampton, to can listen to Newcastle, to in, a way, in a way which is not really but about But can London. we go back I, to nation? We were supposed to be talking about nationalism. Yes. I mean, the key thing to understand is that there are two radically different different traditions of nationalism in the British Isles. There is English, which was top nation nationalism. In other words, the pride in right. having the biggest industry, the first parliament, law, whatever. That died with empire. On the other hand, in Scotland, there is this half-remembered, half-confected, much more European, much more Basque, much more culturally based, much more based on defeat, on a narrative of romance. You agree it, with what you're hearing, David? Yeah, do you? I yeah. think that there's, yeah. a, there's a real cultural problem, which mm. is that the yeah. people of Scotland don't want the same things that the people of England but want. Is and that that's true? Not, that's is not that nationalism. True? That's also about... The National Health Service. No, it's not, about, David. You're giving a myth. Is it true? No, 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 uh, David is giving a myth. Uh, is it true? Because actually, in social attitude exactly. surveys, there isn't much of a difference exactly. between the Scottish yeah, and the exactly. I, want to, I want to say something else, too. Is that, um, you know, nationalism has come back to haunt the world, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when, when we were growing up, actually, I must say, my history teacher thought that the Second World War got rid of religious intolerance and the sense we were taught of myths, tribalism. We? We were taught exactly, myths. We were they were exploded. Myths. The fact is that the world, you know, kids are being offered shopping or fanaticism, and they need something other than shopping or fanaticism. And the kind of warm, cuddly nature of belonging to a tribe of or memories. Or indeed, the savage. Defeat. The savage. I mean, so it isn't the other question, surely. No, the, what, where, where are you taking this? Go on. Well, I'm saying no, that no, I'm talking to David uh, Stark. Uh, uh, well, what, I, what I'm trying no. to do is to recognise that the basic tradition of Scottish nationalism is that they are anything but English. The whole purpose of Scotland's existence is not to be England. If you actually look at Scotland throughout its history, it has recognised it been very much the same as England. Its institutions were modelled. Its language right. is English, for God's sake. Let's, all, let's, the, all the Gaelic I, I nonsense. Want to get through, yes. I want to get through at least three years. Oh, go on. I, no, I don't, I don't think this is is a Tory party. In other words, I think what David Cameron represents is a free market party. Yes. And it's a free market party which has a whole lot of contradictions in it, not least about immigration. In yes. other words, it's yeah. meant to be about the free movement of money, it's meant to be about the free movement of labour, and yet it seems to be, because it's threatened by UKIP, getting itself into a situation where it's going to but be... But this you've taken us to the nextism. Hang on, you've taken us to the nextism, which is liberalism. Yeah. And we had liberalism today because it died. B it died. Liberalism is in the danger, stranger death said Nick Clegg. Them. Now, is that one healthy? Is that flourishing? <laughs> uh, uh, Simon? Well, I was very, actually, I was quite moved by Nick Clegg's speech this morning, actually, because it was one of those which did not say, I am defeated, but the cause will go on. He said the cause is in real trouble. Rubbish. And he said, really, liberalism is faltering on both sides of the Anglo-Scottish border. And he's quite right. And again, he had a larger view. What it was, I thought, was a kind of call when the European referendum comes up to make a case, actually, for um, a non-nationalist definition of how you have a shared political community. Right. In that sense, of course, the liberalism of John Stuart Mill or of unreconstructed Locke is no longer, okay. but it could not, as he said, be more important and more urgent to redefine that right. again. Now, the last yeah, is... That, that's what David Cameron thinks about for one day. Yes, but I want to get on to the last one. Such a for one we've got, we've got I liberalism for such one day, a he makes that announcement and then he ignores it for the next we've four got, and a half Okay, we've got, we've got liberalism in danger, idea, we've yes. got conservatism <laughs> flourishing, we've got nationalism uh, it, it, expressing itself in new ways. The last one, and we've only got a sentence each, unionism. Is it going to survive? Is the union going to survive this parliament? David. 
I don't think it is, no. It won't survive unless it's fought for. Unionism in Ireland has always been what you're against. Someone has to make the case for what the union is for. David Stark. I think there's a possibility of reinventing it, oddly enough, as a union of nations. Yes. Um, uh, in other words, that we could use the desperate need for the reform of the Lords to create some sort of chamber of the nations. Okay. Uh, we have enough in common. And the David truth Hare. is, we have so much in common. You're half, you, you, you've got, you're Scottish English. Uh, yeah, I'm half Scottish. Well, how would you vote if you were Scottish? Oh, I would have voted um, for the Scottish Nationalists because I believe that they represent something culturally different. I'm and, told and by my colleagues here that I'm wrong, but I actually believe <laughs> that they do represent ideas of the common good. Oh. And if I'm to vote oh. for the common the country good, of Adam I'd have voted Smith, for the SNP. The country of meanery. Yes. Thank you all <laughs> very much indeed. Thank you. <laughs>